So as we get closer and closer to the release of She-Hulk, uh, you know, D Disney's going to be doing what they normally do, okay? Amazon does the same exact thing. They're going to start ramping up their advertisements and they're going to be doing little buzzwords here and there to try to make them seem like there's some amazing company for doing something like She-Hulk, which is ridiculous. But you know what irks me the most? What irks me the most is that when they come out with diverse characters, if you even want to call this a diverse character, let's just throw it out there, right? Because I guess it's a female, whatever. If you want to call it that, when they come out with stuff like this, like She-Hulk, right? They want to say stupid things like, oh, well, maybe after this show, it'll be normal for females to be superheroes. When was it not normal? Like, I don't understand. So all the female superheroes that have existed beforehand that people have loved throughout the years and decades, they just never existed. Oh, it took She-Hulk from Disney Plus for it to matter. Is, is that the story that you're trying to tell? These people are such narcissists that they literally think that they are doing some sort of timeless piece by introducing She-Hulk to Disney Plus. Like, what are you what are you talking about? So every other female superhero never mattered. Never mattered at all. Like it just or did it even exist? It just fucking was made up. It just doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Like, why are you such a narcissist? <laughs> it's so annoying. So we're gonna get into the article, guys. But of course, before we do, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know we thought it's a story, and let's get into the video, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, today's article comes from some good old bounding into comics. They've been coming out with some great stuff lately. I feel like all I do is bounding, and I'm sorry. I do try to diversify as much as possible. I fucking hate that word, diversify as much as possible. But damn, man, they've been coming out with some good stuff. I got to give them credit, man. Spencer Bakuli, good stuff. So it says, She-Hulk director Kat Koiro hopes Disney Plus series makes it normal to have female superheroes, forgets the series' own advertising, treats Jennifer Walters' gender as a novelty. I don't understand this. Where do, Where is this mindset? Like, do you guys live in a world where there is no diversity unless you force it? Like, I don't understand. When you go out into the world, do you think that all of a sudden there was no female superheroes until She-Hulk appeared on screen? Like, like, I, I don't understand. Why do you think so much of yourself? Why do you guys think so much of yourselves? Like, these, these people exist. Like, diverse people exist everywhere everywhere we don't need your pandering in order to make us feel like we existed before you pandered to us it doesn't make any sense to me and it doesn't make any sense to a lot of people it says according to she-hulk attorney at law director kat Quero, one of her hopes for the upcoming disney plus series is that it will help make it culturally normal to have female superheroes it already is bro it already is seemingly forgetting the fact that the show's own advertising relies heavily on drawing attention to the novelty of its protagonist's gender. 100%. That's true. They are trying to play this or placate this whole female empowerment thing where it just it, it makes it into something that they almost want to make it seem like it's not normal, but then you're hoping it's normal? Like, it just doesn't make sense. Koro offered this insight into her goals for the Jade Giantess's solo outing after being asked by Slash Film to expand on comments she gave at the official She-Hulk press conference on August 13th. There, she spoke to her love for the character and recalled, I remember very vividly being a little girl and seeing the cover of a She-Hulk comic in amidst this sea of male comics and just not knowing who she was or what this was but knowing I was moved by it and that the idea of being large and in charge and taking control, taking up space, was something, was something that really resonated with me. So... Because you only saw She-Hulk when you were a kid, you thought that no other female superheroes existed, right? So so it was just, you're swallowed up by a bunch of male superheroes that no other female superheroes existed. It seems a little bit ridiculous to me. It really does. I highly doubt, first off, that she was actually involved in comics when she was younger. But let's say she was. That's the fault of your parents <laughs> for only buying you a She-Hulk comic. Why didn't you ask when you were a kid, Oh, hey, Mom and Dad, is there any other female superheroes? I would like to buy their comic books or something along those lines, right? So if you know something exists, wouldn't you want to delve further? No. No, because you actually weren't into comics. Let's be real. You saying you got a, a copy of the female, uh, I'm sorry, you saying you got a copy of She-Hulk when you were younger, highly doubt it, honestly, because if you did, you would have wanted to delve, you would have wanted to delve further. You would have wanted to go further past She-Hulk. It says, well, look, I think I was speaking about being a little girl in a time where it really wasn't part of being a little girl, she said, the director of her above comment. Like, if you liked comments, you didn't really advertise it. I always liked them, but also never felt like I could like them publicly, if that makes sense. Well, that's, just a, that's not just a female thing. Okay, that's nerd culture as a whole. 
nerd culture in the beginning wasn't something that you could just be like everybody was like pretending like they were loving it right there was no mcu back in the day right there was no like if you liked comic books i remember reading comic books i had to like hide it you know what i mean i felt like nerdy when i was reading that stuff or when i was reading manga in high school too i felt i felt very nerdy right it, it was nerd culture it was a thing where it was like we knew what we liked but other people didn't find any value in it. They didn't find any validity in it. But now all of a sudden, because the MCU exists, now everybody wants to pretend like they're a nerd. You got every fucking e-girl on Twitch dressing up in cosplay, pretending like she's actually into what she's dressing up as. Most of them aren't. That's just a fact, right? So you have this kind of like, there's like this shift, right? People saw money in nerd culture. People saw validity now in nerd culture. So now you're trying to pretend as if you're part of that, but you really have never been part of that. Let's be real. A lot of people who pretend like they're part of it now these days weren't actually part of it back in the day. She continued, and now I think that's changed, and the MCU has done... Uh, there you go. And MCU has done a great job of bringing female characters to the forefront, and I think this is just part of that evolution and that step. So I was talking about the new generation, just having it to be normal to have female superheroes. It was always normal. People loved true, good female superheroes. The problem, okay... The problem with female superheroes is that they're normally written by either angry feminists or angry activists. And the problem is that they usually, like, when they treat, um, when they treat, like, what do you want, well, how do I want to say, like, when they treat, like, minority characters, right? When they treat minority characters with this, like, stereotypical pen, right? You're drawing all types of stereotypes on that minority character. They do the same thing with women. They do the same thing with women characters, and that's the problem. They don't have any sort of validity. There's no creativity, right? So if you don't see validity in what you're drawing or what you're writing, you're not going to write something that's good. The thing about male superheroes is that they're written and they're drawn from a creative perspective because nobody's thinking like a victim when they're making them. And the problem with minority characters and female characters are usually made by people who think like a victim. So they end up drawing and they end up writing a victim character. And that's the problem. And nobody's ever interested in hearing that kind of sob story. So it says, uh, just having it be normal to have female superheroes. My dream is that they aren't called female superheroes anymore, Koira asserted. They're just superheroes in the same way my dream is to not ever be called a female director again but just to be called the director i want superheroes to join the pantheon and some of them just happen to be women well the problem is people like you want to constantly push the fact that the people or characters that you are creating are women you put that out there if you wanted this to be a non-female like oriented superhero in the sense that you didn't want to say oh look it's another female superhero you called it she hulk it's still called she hulk so, like, it's literally in the name. It's in the name. The gender is in the name. So how are you going to avoid someone saying, oh, look, you're just, you're just making this into a female version of the Hulk? That's because that's what it is. That's what it is. You have the male Hulk, and then you have She-Hulk. You're going to call her Hulk, too? So call her Hulk. Go ahead. But you don't do that because you can't. Because, first off, the names are obviously trademarked. And, second off, you can't call female Hulk Hulk because people are going to think that they're going to watch the Hulk. If you did, and that's the issue. So it's really just nonstop hypocrisy. That's really hypocritical of her, by the way. So it says, however, despite claiming to be a key component of a creative uh, vision for the series, this sentiment ultimately rings hollow in light of the fact that She-Hulk's own advertising, as well as his own creative team, particularly Koro herself, regularly points to the novelty of Jennifer Walters' gender as a series selling point. After all, fans have accepted and embraced female superheroes for years. She-Hulk alone was so popular upon her debut in 1980 that she was able to carry a 25-issue solo series as a new character, a feat which is seldom even accomplished or seen nowadays by even Marvel's most popular heroes. Rather, it has been Disney and Marvel who have promoted the series by emphasizing the difficulties of her superpowered status on her dating life, attempting to force audiences to acknowledge her as a more capable and superior version of her event Avengers founding cousin and even outright describing her show as a must she series that's <laughs> it's like come on bro you can't you can't you cannot make this shit up you cannot make it up they are so obviously hypocritical in every sense of the word i cannot wait to see this show bomb because you know this show is going to absolutely bomb and it sucks bro it sucks because she hulk is such a good character in the comics but unfortunately she is being handled by people who see themselves as victims day in and day out so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you did enjoy it if you did consider leaving me a subscribe i would greatly appreciate it. don't forget to like the video comment let me know what you thought of today's story and i'll see you guys on the next one hypnotic out